Hey everybody, today I am wanting to go live and talk about three key elements to get into control of your manifesting because we're always creating our life in every moment, every thin sliced moment of life, but a lot of times it feels like we're actually creating a lot of things that are outside of our control instead of creating things that we're very much in control of. So hey, if you don't know me, if we've never met before, my name is Mary Shores and I am a brand new Hay House author of the book Conscious Communications, your step-by-step -step guide to harnessing the power of your words to change your mind, your choices, and your life. So today I'm going to share with you these three key elements to getting in control of your manifestations, which are the first one is feelings, the second one is your words, and the third is choices. And so, you know, I'm always hearing a lot of spiritual teachers and new thought leaders talking about getting in alignment. And the thing about the word alignment, I used to be really confused about what in the world people were talking about. And so alignment just really meant, you know, when I, when I figured this out, alignment really meant is when you get your thoughts, your feelings, your words, and your actions all moving in the same direction of what it is you're wanting to create in your life. So think like your your goals, your wishes, your desires. You know, let's think about 2018. Like what do we really want to bring about in the year 2018? I know I've got some pretty hefty things that I'm going to be creating. So for right now, hey, just hit the like button. If you can, let me know you can hear me. And um, I would love to know where you are listening from. So throw in the comments below. Let me know where you are from. Okay, so the first key element to getting in control of your manifestation is your feelings. So we hear this a lot, guys. We hear people talk about like your feelings is the most important things. Neville Goddard wrote an entire book called The Feeling is the Secret. And this book was published in the early 1900s. So here's the thing what this means. If your feelings are your point of manifestation, that does make your feelings extremely important. But the thing is, like, if you're anything like me, I don't necessarily always feel in control on a day-to-day -day basis of how I feel. So I want to take a moment to explain to you guys where your feelings are actually coming from. So your feelings are coming from a place in your body that is um, it's very scientific. So my book, Conscious Communications, is really at this crossroads that I like to say. It's at this crossroads of where science and spirituality meet. Because really, science and spirituality, to me, have always been talking about the same things. They're just using a, a different language. That's it. Okay, so in spirituality, we talk about nothing is more important than that we feel good. But how do you feel good if you're constantly being triggered by your nervous system? So this is where your feelings are coming from, is your nervous system and what chemicals are flooding through your body on a constant basis. So if you wake up in your happy mood and your point of manifestation is happiness or feeling happy, feeling good, then think about it like this. Your ideas are going to flow to you easier. Your gratitude comes to you easier when you look around that the grass just looks a, a little bit greener the snow if it's snowing where you're at looks a little bit whiter and brighter and we can just feel like we're in a good mood but if you're not feeling in a good mood which you know maybe you've got a problem you've got circumstances you know your feelings really come from your circumstances but they also come from like your point of your basic health so one of the things that you can do is really pay attention to what are you feeding your body with. So the way to feel good is to increase the serotonin and the dopamine in your brain. You can do this by like silly ways. You can watch a kitten video on YouTube and that will raise your vibration, so to speak. But for long-term feeling good, you want to increase your serotonin. And the way to increase your serotonin in many ways is to decrease your stress. So let me know in the comments some of the things that you feel triggered by. Like I can tell you one of mine is when my kids don't get their homework done and if they don't get their homework done and they tell me that they don't have any homework and then I find out later from one of the teachers that, you know, they did have homework, they just didn't get it done. Or sometimes like some work stresses I'll feel really triggered by. And so what you want to do to increase feeling good is to decrease the stresses. So it's like, what can I do 
to avoid this one particular stress. So like, for example, what if you're driving home and you know, I love the wow face, you know that friend that's going to call you and it's going to complain about their day. Well, here's the thing, and this kind of can like as a good place to lead us into our number two point of the three keys of manifestation is words. Okay, so words are like, like the basic thing is words are affirming. So your words can either affirm what you want or they can be complaining. And words are like this boomerang. They go out into the world, they go out into the universe and they bring back to you like a, like a boomerang what it is you are talking about. And so, you know, this is very important. My own personal story with words is really that for like 10 years, I had this crazy, crazy dream that I wanted to be a writer. And the thing is, like, I would go around and I would tell anybody who would listen to me, I want to, I want to write a book, but I'm not a writer. And this is why this is so important because words are like a mirror to your subconscious programming, okay? And when you hear me say the words that I want to write a book, it's like you can see this written on my soul, like it's a purpose in my life that I am supposed to write this book. But I have a real problem if the next words that come out of my mouth are, but I'm not a writer, because those words believe it or not, are also revealing to me something in my subconscious programming that's preventing me from creating that dream of writing a book. You know, maybe I thought I had to have connections in the publishing industry, or maybe I thought I had to, um, you know, be an English genius or have a PhD in English. So but think about this in your own life. Like how often do you say, I want to start a business, but I don't have any money or I want to lose 20 pounds, but I don't have time to go to the gym. So shout out, shout out in the comments, like what is the thing you find yourself saying, I want this, but I don't have that, you know, let me know some of your ideas or what's coming up for you because I really love to know um, how you resonate with this. Um, also, you know, like send me another wow face. Ah, I love the wow faces. All right, so the third key element to controlling your manifestation is with your choices. Okay, so we've got feelings, the way that you feel and how to control your feelings is really by what stressors you let in and what are the things you're doing to increase the serotonin and the dopamine levels in your brain. Number two is all about words and understanding that words are like a boomerang. They're going to come out and the things that we're talking about, the things that we're talking about are like a boomerang and they're going to go out into the universe and bring back to us what we are saying, okay? So whether we want to call that prayer, intuition, you know, it's just very under important to understand that words are what really control the programming of our subconscious mind. And then the third thing is choices. So thank you, Carolyn, for uh, sharing about weight loss being your area. So I'll use that as my example for choices. You know, I think that um, in, in one thing to understand in controlling what you manifest is the fact that infinite possibilities exist for all of us. But if infinite possibilities exist, sometimes we make the assumption that that means that it's the good things. Infinite possibilities doesn't always mean good because it's an entire spectrum. So if I can make infinite possibilities um, what is available to me to create in life, then doesn't that mean that I can make my dreams come true of becoming a Hay House author, which I did, or it means that I can continue to flow in the chaos of uncertainty and not be controlling my manifestations, which equals failure, unhappiness, um, lots of disease and illnesses that, that kind of like plague you. So the way that you can change your possibilities into a probabilities is to understand that you are creating your reality, you're creating your life with every thin sliced moment, every choice you make, every thought you think, every word that comes out of your mouth is creating the next thing that's going to happen to you, like right here in this very moment. That's why we say the power is now, because it really is about these choices. But sometimes our choices can be confusing to us. So using the example of weight loss, 
I'm going to teach you the easiest way that I know of, which is my third key element, is how to get in control of your choices. And this is chapter five in my book, which is called To Cleanse or Clog, That is the Question. It's really, really simple. So I don't, if I want to go on a diet and I want to lose 20 pounds, which I would love to do, then I don't need to, I don't need to learn some kind of crazy complicated diet system because it's not like what's really in alignment with my life right now but i can easily easily look at a piece of food and i can ask myself if i put this in my body will it cleanse me or will it clog me all right so this is like this the first little step here is to understand but like what about so if i'm looking at an apple which actually i brought an apple to work with me today but it's in my pocket in my jacket so i can't show it to you if i look at an apple and i just say to myself if i put this apple in my body will it cleanse me or will it clog me then we all intuitively know that the answer to that question is an apple is going to cleanse you but if i if I, it's three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm tired and I'm looking at a Snickers bar, I can ask myself the same question. If I put this Snickers bar in my body, is it going to cleanse me or is it going to clog me? All right. And then the trick is we want to live by this 80-20 rule, which means 80% of the time I need to be making cleansing choices and 20% of the time it's okay for me to have my piece of chocolate or my potato chip or whatever it is the thing that goes into my 20% cleanse column. But here's the magic of cleanser clog is it doesn't just work for your diet and your health. It works for every area of your life. So let's talk about relationships for a second. So in your relationships, you know, understand that everything you do in your relationships, everything you say, every action you take, every word that comes out of your mouth in your relationship, say with your significant other, is either cleansing that relationship or clogging it. Because what I'm really saying is that everything is either creating a deeper connection or it's driving a disconnection. So take a moment and think like what kinds of cleanses and clogs do you have in your life? Like what are the top ways you think you're clogging your diet? What about how are you clogging your relationships? How are you clogging your finances? How are you cleansing your career? And you can use this for massive spiritual and personal growth. So Heather says, what about relationships with others, the parent and how to shift the parenting interactions? Ignore, distract, look at the evidence of how, like look for the evidence of how I would like it. Hint, talking about now, talking about it now. Okay, so I have two, I have two boys, right? And the same thing applies. Everything I'm doing in my relationship with my children is either creating a cleanse or a clog. So what I'm really saying is everything, every interaction that I have with my boys is either creating a deeper connection or it's driving a disconnection. And so, you know, our children are not what we can control. <laughs> In, in many cases. So I have high school boys. So I just, you know, talk about having high school boys. And although, you know, one of the things that I had to really learn because my older son specifically is on the autism spectrum. So I really had to learn how to let go of expectations that I had because our belief systems are really built through our experiences as a child. And so I had to learn to let go of these expectations. And if I make my daily instructions to my children based on what is going to most support them, that's going to be a cleanse. And sometimes that doesn't mean being that forceful thing or force that force in my house that's forcing them to do homework. You know, that was the example I said earlier in the video was talking about one of my triggers is when my son doesn't get his homework done and tells me that he didn't have any. Well, anyway, all right, that's going off on a whole different tangent, but really just understand that um, everything you do is either cleansing or clogging. So the way that you use this is just to stop for a moment and ask yourself, if I do this thing, if I say this, if I, if I continue with this behavior, it just look at it through the lens of cleanse or clog. Is this literally, is this creating a cleanse in my life or is it clogging? And if it's not if it's a clog then really you know try to keep your cleanses and clogs within that 
um, 80-20 rule. So I want to thank everyone for tuning into the video today. If you want to know more, if you want to know more, my book is Conscious Communications, which is your step-by-step -step guide to harnessing the power of your words to change your mind, your choices, and your life. Now, I have spent my entire career, I've spent my entire career finding positive solutions for people who are freaking out. And I've really put the trifecta of neuroscience, spirituality, and chemistry into this book to teach you guys how to get control of your manifestations. And actually, as a free gift for you guys today, I have created this 36-page Conscious Communications Guidebook course that um, you can all grab for free. It's right on my website. So after you go check out the book on Amazon.com. Just go to maryshores.com. That's S-H-O-R-E-S. -E um, and there is a free gifts section. You can find easily the Conscious Communications guidebook and download this now. So, all right, we'll see you all next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.